Hi Ed Xavier, welcome to our Bonsai Retreat and uh, it's the 6th of April and guess what? It's time to get ginkgo. Yep, the ginkgo biloba. Need to uh, get the wire off. This wire's been on for a good six months. You can see all the buds are coming out. It's probably the best start I've had to a growing season for the ginkgo. But, apart from getting the wire off, I've decided this one is going to come out of this pot and is going to go into a uh, into a pond basket. I want to really see this one develop higher and bigger. But, best thing about it is once this stuff comes out, we're going to be pruning back to our desired bud locations for the future growth through the, uh, the summertime. So, let's just do this some um, basic maintenance stuff. Also, need to get all the weeds and rubbish that's been building up over the winter, get that out. Well, that turned into a bit of an adventure. New pot obviously pond basket and this one I'm going to make a decision on right now. Yeah when I was taking the wire off uh, and just took the topsoil off this one um, it very quickly became apparent there was a lot of um, roots growing from around these crotches and stuff like that. That always tells me that it's full down below. Um, loves to produce new roots from up high. When I had a little dig around an exploratory it was, uh, it was nearly half pots worth so I've actually cut a load away and decided to do a repot on it. These are pretty tough and hardy, I'm not too bothered, but you know it does come with some risk. Although the leaves are already just starting to come out, so most of the energy is already going up. We're not outside the potting window per se. I'm happy to let this one come out. Again, it's going to be clump style anyway. Two that are coming out this way. We've got some good stuff that's going to come outwards. It's just this big one here we need to look at. So really. Probably we want, one goes that way, one goes to the back. Shall I be really bold? You know what I'm like. What difference does that make? Now, we'll let that go and uh, we'll probably see this in a few minutes time when it's a couple of months later. Well, this one was always screaming out to go into a bigger developmental pot. And when I pulled it out of this wee thing, what was actually clear is the tree was, um, was retreating, in other words, dying. There was a little bit of root growth there, but it was really saying there's not much point in me going on. Oh me, oh my. So yeah, so we've got it in a pond basket. I think I have ideas of literati of some sort of bungee. Same thing, I think. But for now, I want this to grow a massive, massive root um, bundle down there. So I'm just gonna let this go. And uh, yeah, no idea. It's an interesting, very, very interesting style. It could be that we cut here next and continue to grow it on here. But for now, I'm happy just to let it uh, go out. Maybe we might make a decision in a couple of months time. Who knows? Now, I think I've said to you uh, before last year, I was talking about Genko. You know, there's stuff that gets um, over. And as I say, this was all a batch that I got back in 2017 from Saving Nurseries. It's often pretty rough and ready. And I think I left this to go to see if I could get any buds out. There's an argument to say it could actually, it could actually look quite good as a, a remnant with this one growing up through it. I don't know. You tell me. So I won't make that decision now because it really doesn't make a jot of difference. However, we've got this one, which has got these two little stringy things here. Great big long one coming up from the middle. The problem with it is if we remove this great big one here, we're going to be left with two that are coming out sideways in an odd way and very parallel to each other. So that leads me to say, will we remove one of them? Either this one or we remove this one, which is on the inside of that bend. Or potentially we remove them both and we run with this one here. But I'm not quite sure how that would look. So they don't come out from this junction very well. I don't, I'm not convinced that with this removed, these will look much better. So I am definitely at a loss with this one. So please, get your thinking minds together. I won't be making a decision for a while. I probably won't make the decision this year, but I'm very, very intrigued to know what you would do with them. As for the rest of them, all I've done, taken the top inch of soil off, renewed it, put some fertilizer, sun's come out put some fertilizer and really let them go. So while I go the long way about this and have to go through the next two months of 
toil and trouble, you have the luxury of just waiting on the can of three, perhaps, to see what it's like in a couple of months' time. Three, two, oops, no, do it this way. Three, two, one. A rude. No, wrong finger. Well, we're somewhere around the 18th, 19th of May, and uh, I've been looking at the Genko, and gosh, I can't remember when we last saw them, but I'm sure there's gonna be a video coming up there. Uh, I think it was the early spring work I did on them and did some pruning back and stuff like that, ready for the new bud bursts. Um, and generally, um, out of the sort of nine, 10, 11 of them I've got, I've had a lot of success. We've got lots of leaves coming up, as you can see from this great vibrant growth you're seeing here. But I have got one that's pretty well, just one of them that's pretty well decided it's had enough of the bonsai retreat. Shame, but I will say now, although I had a thick trunk, it's uh, wasn't the most promising of candidates for bonsai work. So we'll see that in a minute. But you know, the questions I'm asking now is I had a look back in my uh, database, and for those of you who don't know about my bonsai app, again, that's probably something coming up there or in the description. I looked back and I did the Genko work on these in June when I did my post flush hardened pruning. I tend to do these a little bit later. But as you can see right now, loads and loads of really, really nice promising growth. And all I'm gonna do straight away, I've got one here straight away that I know that I wanna sort out a little bit. And what we're gonna do is make sure that these suckers don't take all the energy that I want going elsewhere on the tree. So let's just remove these suckers down here. Um, and there we go. But of all of them, this is one that I think is, is more sort of prehistoric looking. And it has that, that, that flame style that you expect of a traditional Genko. While I'm looking at it, this one's got the most growth. I want to um, stop growth going upwards. So let's just take the top off that one. Take the top off that one. And take the top off that one. Quite happy to let this branch continue to grow out. I'll probably take that one back just a little bit further. Okay, yeah, so I'll let that extend out another couple more weeks. Um, but when I come back, what I will be doing is what you're seeing me do already, is I'll start removing some of the leaves as sort of partial defoliation, which is something I'd definitely like to do with my Genko. Um, and again, I say that um, with, with all your stuff, for your post flush hardened pruning. When you, when you get to the point where you're seeing long extensions, certainly up high, cut those right back to the first leaf, leaf pair. Um, otherwise, you're getting the energy the wrong place when you really want it going out here for better branch uh, division. Anyway, I'm going into one. Let's uh, skip on a few more weeks and we'll go through the rest of these Genko. Well, who'd have thought it? It's now the 20th of June and uh, I can't even remember when I think I showed you one of these. They've all been growing very, very well, even one that I thought was in trouble. And I am gonna do just a little bit of early summer pruning. And I find with the Genko, some years they'll respond and send out another flush in time for the autumn, sometimes they won't. But um, always I find they make it to the next year. So I keep doing it from experience, it's not an issue. So I'm just gonna take you through these individually. And I know you certainly saw this one um, and you've probably seen this one, but this one, I was very, very confused what to do. Should we deal with this one first? And seriously, if you actually compare how it looked a few months ago when I was so unsure what to do with it, I really, I really like just the whole impression. I like how we've got this one winding up and creating leaves over the top. I like all of this. I even like this new shoot that's come up here. So I'm actually gonna to continue to let it go like that. Give it a quick spin. It, it, it's unusual, but there's a sense of depth and an age to it, which I like. And the way these uh, leaves have worked in around this dead part is actually, I think, really good. So all I am gonna do is perhaps create a little layer. And I do like to do it, especially do it with oak, where you've got multi-lobe uh, leaves. I'd like to remove sort of one or two of them. And on this pad here, I've got one that's going up so we'll get rid of that. So at least we create a little pad there. And then when I look at this, this one's coming out quite a long way. So I'm gonna get rid of that one and this one, which is just 
coming in and across. For now I'm going to leave the deadwood as it is and then we look at this little one here I'm just going to remove a couple of the taller leaves. Underneath here you can see there's another little one growing. Hey, if I lift this higher up it could look almost like a sort of prehistoric floor or something in one of those old... Di I need a dinosaur for it, don't I? Yeah, I know I hear you all screaming, not another plastic dinosaur. Dinosaurs, my kids can't get enough. I think it's the thing that I love most about Genko is they'll suddenly throw up just a little bud out of nowhere. And they've done it here, and I can't remember that this one was here either. And it's why you never ever give up on these. It's amazing. I mean, the rest of this is dead, I know. But if we get a branch coming out the back here and here, that's really going to create some depth to this. Really, really happy. So in terms of just, we've got a leaf lower down here. Get rid of that. I like this coming over the top, but it's not necessary. We've got another big one here. Perhaps that big one out the top there. I quite like that one going over there. We've got a, a leaf here that's browned off, so I'm going to get rid of that one. A little tip there, I'm just going to cut the brown off. We have got, if you look in close, there's quite a conglomeration of leaves there. So reducing them does actually do something productive for the tree. Um, it allows light to come in and, and it also tells the tree, yeah, go on, push some more growth out. So I think I'm going to leave that one like that for now. And you know what? I'm over the moon about it. But you let me know in the comments what you think. Definitely put this into a nicer pot next year. I reckon it's going to be grand. So let's quickly work our way through the others. Nothing complicated, but I know a few of you out there love ginkgo. So, hey, join me as I continue to uh, prune and dabble. This one continues to grow up and it's got that lovely flame shape that I like. I think all I will do is... I've got the height here, there probably just want to bring that height down a bit let's bring it to there and by the way cutting wise I'll just put that straight into my soil bucket and uh, I've got I've certainly got three or four that are growing quite well cuttings wise but I'll go and do that now all I do is just remove a few of the leaves don't bother about rooting hormone just straight the dirt this one here again I think is going to be an apple uh, an ideal cutting candidate. It's not really doing anything. Yes, it's creating some foreground, but no. I'm going to remove it in this instance. And say, so, another cutting. Got some leaves going across, causing some clutter. We'll get rid of that. Got another big one here. Big one at the top. And again, this this leaf cutting is really personal preference. I have got some browning off. I'll show you what I mean. You know, it's something we all find that happens. The end of the leaves just start to soften yellow. Just yellowing here. They're going to drop. Um, there's another one in here, browning off. Need to remove things like that. But also be aware that uh, these do have a habit. They've got a, um, what they call quite a prehistoric circulatory system. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it does mean uh, that uh, when it comes to getting all that nice life-giving juices around, it can be a bit slow if it's impaired in any way. Um, I'm sure someone could tell me in the comments in uh, better detail. But I just remove the stuff that's dying and take note of it. You know, for me, that's part of my daily rounds, so to speak. I go around each of the trees, and normally through the pruning, I'll notice stuff like that. These have actually been in quite a lot of sunlight, all I'll do, like the Dawn Redwood, I'll actually move them to a, a much shadier part of the garden, keep them watered, keep an eye on them, and they'll come back even more greener and vigorous, I'm sure, later on. Well, clearly my request for suggestions won't have happened yet, because you've only just seen the video. Yeah, I'm sure having all this lovely green foliage on it sort of disguises the big issues we're having with this. I'm not going to over-describe it again. You've only just seen me go on about it. What I am going to do is just thin out some of the growth shorten off some of the leaves there to just one or two anything that uh, may get in the way of uh, future development and I really am I'm honest I want some um, I would love some suggestions on this one because uh, 
keeps stumping me a bit, to be honest. And you say, all I'm doing, just clearing away stuff that's, well, I mean, this is crossing. What would you do? I really don't know. With all this leaf on it now, I'm just gonna shorten off stuff. That's really all I'm gonna do. So please, definitely in the comments, let me know what you would do with this. It's nice and green, that means it's healthy. But not sure, maybe it'll never make a bonsai. <laughs> and then we've got this one in the drum pot. It's actually a, a personal favorite. Again, we've got this great big clump here and an unusual, an unusual division here, but there is a certain majesty about it, if I can use that word, and I love it. I mean, this one is developing as a back branch, so I'm gonna to continue to let that go out. All I'm gonna do is remove some inner, some inner leaves. I want that to continue to grow out. I want that to thicken. See, if that happens, we've got a browned off leaf. Not so great. Uh, here, not sure where that's gonna go. So I like having this just for the, the leaf. We've got a brown on there. Uh, let's just remove a little bit of crossing leaves. We can open up that canopy just a weeny bit. Here, take off two of them. So I've just got a pad like that. We've got something inside here. And again, a lot of those buds down there, under there, may not actually extend so i'll just watch we see a little bit more of the trunk line there now we've got this one that's coming across but for now i'm going to keep that on there that's that one done keep moving through them it's i think you're seeing the habit here i'm just personal preference creating layers where i can by removing the odd leaf and ultimately allowing light to get into the uh, the bonsai which is what i really want this one has actually been quite interesting it actually produced What's one, two, three shoots from that, what do I call the, uh, the little stomach growth there, which uh, I could um, gnaw it all back, but I'm interested to see just how much grows out of there. Um, I've got no idea on the direction of this. Hmm. I mean, let's be honest, what'll happen if I keep all three of them on there, this horrible lump that's there will only get bitter, better as more energy is fed through it. So I probably do need to make a decision. Um, the truth is, I've got three cuttings there really, I could pop those up separately and have new bonsai. Unless I was looking to bring this thing right down and utilise those as new leaders, they really need to go. So, much that I like them, or I like the interest in them, I'm going to remove them. And what I'm gonna do is do a little bit of nibbling on this and reduce that. And literally all I will do for that is use my knob cutter. And just hollow it out a little bit. So when it does roll, it'll roll in. Now, the reason why I've held off doing something like that is because these are notoriously slow to recover and heal from such um, Abuse, is that the wrong word? Maybe actually I better not use that word, it'll get flagged I'm sure, from such uh, heavy handed pruning. But I'll put some, um, some uh, putty on it and we'll see what happens later. I really need some bulge or something to come up higher up this trunk. So all I can really do now is again, I think I found with Genko, and it's what I'll say to you probably from my experience, it's a waiting game. Every year I'll get a surprise on one or two of them and the rest nothing. I just keep pruning back and waiting. And each year, it's funny, I slowly get something I want. This great big uh, growth here, let's just reduce the growing tip on that, take off a few of the uh, scorchy leaves. Again here, just take a few of these leaves off. Uh, and really, just see what it, uh, it decides to do. Um, I'm really struggling with this one. Be nice if that came out as a bud and brought a branch out forwards. Just just give it a bit of dimension or sort of three dimensions. So let's just random pruning, I know. And then so we've got this big crown here. 
Interesting to know whether or not I should actually cut that one back. These aren't your ordinary sort of bonsai subjects. So, you know, at best of times it's difficult to apply the rules or, or the sort of conventions to them. So in this instance, I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it. And do you know what? If you've got an opinion in here uh, yourself, then let me know in the comments. Um, I think I'll just thin this one out, basically. In fact, looking at this, I mean, it goes out, we've got one there, there's another one. It's coming out from here. I'm going to keep that, I'm going to keep that for now. I may well remove that in the August, in the uh, autumn time. But what I have got here is one, two, three. So I'm just going to reduce that top one. At the moment, front is probably there. I quite like the, the width down there. And it also means there's a little bulge here that you can't see. Um, there, it's a lot more obvious. That's the other option for the front. Let me know what you think. Now, what I'm gonna say is I've got four more very, very different ginkos to, uh, to go through. For those of you who feel ginkoed out, please, if you've enjoyed this, a big, big like. And uh, remember to hit the bell notifications. Otherwise, I'm going to take you through the other four. But trust me, they're all very, very different and probably worth looking at. So let's crack on, shall we? Now, for those of you who saw one of my first ever Genko videos, you'll know that um, I picked all these up, like a lot of my sort of import stuff from uh, Saving Nurseries. I think I bought this as pretty well a dead rooted something or other. I ripped all the roots apart. I did it with two or three of them. Two of them died and this one has continued to hang on. Interesting shape is the best way of describing it. And I've got to continue to just let this one develop. It's really, really interesting. So um, I don't want to touch this lower branch because I want more strength in it. I've got a lot of vigor going this way, which may well lend itself to bringing it back. What I do want to do is just take the growing tip off and then that means this one also needs to be brought back. Uh, we've got something growing from in there. Should be a nice, uh, nice place to get buds. And we've also got another budding point there and also in there. Because I know it's, um, it's not been the healthiest, I'm not gonna do any more pruning back on it. Um, I'm really happy with what I've seen. Some yellowed leaves, I might just open up open up the lower part just a little bit to more light yeah i think um truthfully we'll leave that as is this does have a lot of potential to be a very very interesting interesting bonsai i mean i may even end up removing this lower one here and then we see that growing up you'll hopefully remember that this one uh, was actually originally in a very very sort of small rectangular ceramic, very, very shallow and narrow. And I said to you, it was slowly dying and I put it in this pond basket earlier this year. The growth on this is um, quite limp, flaccid, if I can use that word, and uh, no shoots coming out or anything. So all I'm gonna do is just reduce a few things back, just to lessen the load on the roots, to be honest, and just to bring the shape back in a little bit more probably bring that one in actually as well. Um, I'm certainly not going to take any of the leaves off. Um, what leaf growth there is, I need, because I don't think it's got the energy to push out any sort of more growth. It's spending all its time trying to build some roots after uh, I completely nearly decimated them earlier this year. And if you want to see how badly I decimated, well, you have to go back to that Genko video. It's a good video. You'll be surprised at just how much came off. Again, another very, very bizarre bendy wendy one. I think um, with a lot of these imports, the uh, countries of origin just love to put them in the fields, loads of wire on them, and then forget them. And as I say, very, very um, smooth barked, the uh, Genko. So the marks when they're there basically stay for the life of the tree. We've got a little bud that they've tried to push, the same here, but there's no power in there, no strength in there. I can't remember, I may well have changed the potting angle on this one. Really don't remember, but. Um, Again, it's, it's, it's not as strong, the, uh, the growth on this. Uh, I'm just gonna clear out a few leaves. Very, very interesting though. And uh, just maybe just take the top off there. 
two more. Well done if you're still with me. This one's just bizarre. Uh, leaning right over, right across here. I mean, very, very interesting. And I think with this one, I need to get stronger because I may well try and just bring it up a little bit further up like that. But uh, I'm sure we had a look on the roots and this one and it was, uh, I was very limited in what I could do. So again, same thing. I'm just going to have a look around. Not a lot of strength to push there. Got a little stub here I'm going to get rid of. Or not. Uh, get rid of one of the leaves there and that leaf there. We have got quite a lot of strength growing up here. I'll just take that off. Open up, move one of these leaves here just to give ourselves a bit more circulation in there. And uh, I've got something under here which I don't actually think is going to be any good, so I'm going to remove that. There's also another one on the inside of the bend there. I'm going to get rid of that too. Interesting enough, we've got bud points there and also there you know I think probably I'm gonna um, leave it be as is I'm happy there's lots of green growth on it let's see let's see if we can get it to enjoy the leaves and see what it pushes out over the next six weeks there can be a lot more growth to come with these anyway that's the second to last one or the penultimate I like that penultimate nice word so should we go for the one that I thought was dying earlier Okay, well I've left the tallest and probably the ugliest and most challenging for last. All the brown that's on this is the result of the first flush of growth that didn't do anything and just died off. But it's already pushed out the second flush, which is all the lovely green stuff we've got. It's potentially quite weak and because of that my pruning decisions are going to be pretty, pretty slim. Unless there's something blatantly obvious, I'm probably going to be leaving this thing alone and let it just get on with the uh, the act of, uh, of living. Some nice growth here, I'm just going to take the growing tip off that one, growing tip off that one. I probably want to reduce that quite a long way and why not, let's do that. Okay, I mean you can clearly see these were all the, the leaves from that initial growth, it's a very stunted leaf if anything, that won't produce anything, it's going to die off, we've got the same here. Very, very weak, wobbly. Be interesting to see what happens to that after, where that just becomes dead. In which case, you know, this ends up getting removed. A lot of life there. So I just need to watch it. Well, there you go. That's a little foray through the, uh, the first six month cycle for the, uh, the Genko Biloba. Overall, um, I think they're looking better than they were when you saw them earlier in the year. That's the sort of pruning I did. Again, it really is down to you. I could have left all that growth on and it probably wouldn't have affected things at all. It is good to take the growing tips off branches so you don't want to extend further and certainly at the apex because then you want the lower growth to get more strength on it. And certainly with something like this, you want to try and keep that apex down a bit because they are a flame shape. They do want to keep growing upwards. So um, I've already asked you to hit the like, so I won't do that again. If you've hung in there, well done, because uh, very, very repetitive, but hopefully you saw there were some very, very different examples of trees. And uh, thank you for hanging around. I do wish you all the best for your bonsai and your family. And uh, all I can say is happy bonsai and God bless. Cheers.